and welcome back to the Peculiar Place podcast. This is a segment two V's in a pod and we're your hostesses. I'm Mandy. And I'm Jesse. Hello guys. I hope you're doing very well. We have a pretty intense podcast as usual. They're as all usual. intense. They're all very intense. They're all intense. It's actually going to be mostly trending topics today because there has just been so much going on in pop culture, in the news, a lot happening over at the palace, which I'm sure you guys have probably heard mm-hmm. about. So mm-hmm. we're going to give our opinions on that. Also, we're doing a psychopath test. More like you're doing it because I know the answers. But let me just tell you, I did these riddles for Ty on the way here and he got them all right. The so. guy's in psychopath? Yes. Oh, Ty. I think he's just really smart and like he knows how to analyze a situation. And so he's just... That is that is very smart if you yeah. can figure it out. He did. I was a little shocked. But also not because Ty knows everything somehow. I wonder if I'm going to get them. I'm excited to do them. Yeah, I'm curious. Also, huge shout out to our patrons. Thank you so much for your support as usual. I wanted to mention that uh, last week, the video, we didn't really promote it at the start, but it's about Mandy's exorcism. I'm not going to add any context to it. All right. We're just going to show you the thumbnail. Find out. Go find out. Go find out. All right. It's on Patreon. Link down below or go to www patreon.com slash peculiar place podcast and this week we are doing our craziest concert experiences we have both had some really strange things happen wild wild things Mm -hmm. and so if you want to go see both those story times head to patreon and thank you so much again for your support all right so before we get into trending topics ophelia had her first shots yeah and it was awful Yeah. (laughs) Like, it's funny because I've been such a very, like, strict mom about, like, germs and cold and flu and any kind of sickness because she was born in January and, like, her being a newborn. Anybody that comes in, I'm like, wash your hands. No one's allowed to kiss her face. You know, if you're feeling sick, if you have a sniffle, if you have a cough, don't come over. Mm -hmm. And, like, even at the very beginning, I was having people wear masks when they would come in because I was so afraid of her getting sick. And, like, you hear all the horror stories about, like, RSV and, like, little babies that... You know, it's it's so scary. So I've been very strict. So I've been, like, counting down the days for these vaccines. Yeah. Because I've been looking forward to, like, not being so, like, freaked out by it anymore. And, like, I could take her places and not be so worried. And then Easter's coming up with, like, the family. And it's just, like, I don't know. It's a comfort that she's going to have her first set of shots. Yeah. But once the day arrived, I was so nervous because I'm like, oh, my God. Like, am I ready for my child to experience pain for the very first time. Oh, yeah. She has no idea what pain is and what it feels like to be in pain and all of that. Like, she has no idea. Imagine not knowing pain and then experiencing it for the first time. Yeah, that's awful. Oh, my God. I was hoping that I would be able to, like, breastfeed her while she was getting her shots because they say online, like, that helps for some reason. It's a distraction. It's a distraction, whatever. And when I was asking my doctor... She said, like, she shouldn't eat because sometimes they vomit. And also, she was receiving some kind of oral vaccine as well, where it's like a liquid. Yeah. So, like, feeding her before wouldn't have been a good idea, or during even. Instead, they made me hold her little arms down so she couldn't move, and she was naked and afraid. She, like, had two sets of shots in both legs. The first shot, when it went in, her face... And the sound that came out of her, I've never heard it before. I've never seen her react that way ever. It was something out of my nightmare. (laughs) Like, her face went beet red, and her whole face became her mouth open and crying. And it was awful, awful, awful. I cried watching her experience that pain so as soon as it was over i was holding her hugging her and we were both crying yeah we were just both crying thank god mom was there shout out to mom she has really been the biggest help ever in situations like that it's literally like i'm taking care of my baby (laughs) and she's she's taking taking care of of me oh yeah yeah and i needed that because i can't even imagine like doing that alone and mom 
mark it down on your calendar the next set of shots it's at four months <laughs> and i'm yeah. gonna need you there again but anyway she's fine the last like two or three days have been a little off she's been like kind of vomity she's been you know not too feverish we've been giving her a little bit of tylenol for the pain and all of that so the worst is over yeah for now and uh yeah my heart hurt really bad yeah for that, i can't even imagine actually the next time that i'm taking her for her vaccines i'm taking the next day off of work because going to work the next day knowing that she was like kind of off yeah i hated it every second of it forget it i'm sleeping over at mom's house and i am taking care of my yeah, kid for do that. 24 hours that's a good straight. idea do it <laughs> but no anyway one blame you new moms i get it i know how you feel the vaccinations they're awful. She's so cute, though. She's been smiling so much. Yeah, she started, like, smiling so much. And, like, you can tell that she, like, wants to laugh. Yeah. She doesn't know how to laugh. Any yet. day now. Any Literally day now. any day because she's, she wants to laugh. I could see it. And she laughs at Luca all the time. Luca's so funny. He makes her kind of laugh in a way, but not fully laughing yet so when she actually laughs you better send me a video immediately or you facetime know me i will oh my god i will cry i will bawl my eyes out the little like the baby laugh like the I... chuckle it's so hearty like they laugh from their chest oh like it, their gosh. whole i love it i'm I so excited it. i can't wait to okay we love ophelia so we're gonna get right into the kate middleton conspiracy is she missing is she okay what the heck is going on so bizarre for those of you who have not heard which i feel like it's impossible like every news station is talking about what the heck is going on with her we're gonna start we have a little timeline here we're gonna go through it and we're gonna just i guess say what we think is going on which is what i think everyone thinks is going on on january 17th kensington palace alerted everyone that kate was going to the hospital for a abdominal surgery and then on january 29th they announced she was leaving the hospital and would not be returning to her official royal duties until after easter so it clearly wasn't a small surgery i mean the fact that she was in there for like two weeks in the hospital shows it was something very significant right if it's a small surgery, you're out of there in, like, what, so a day or two? So we don't know why she got the surgery done? No, which is strange because they were so open about, uh, was it Charles who had um, cancer? But abdominal surgery, is, that sounds like a hysterectomy. It could be anything. Could be. It's just the recovery for a hysterectomy, I don't know if that it's is... It's really long. It, well, it is three months long? I mean, I don't know if it's three months long. It might. I know it's definitely six weeks. Yeah. Who knows what it is? They haven't said. People wonder if it's cancer. We're not really sure. Hmm, could be anything. So they said she'd be coming back after Easter, okay? It's not Easter yet, so she's still abiding by what they're saying. They said she was making good progress with her recovery, and that's all they would say. They wouldn't show a photo of her. They wouldn't have her, like, do her own announcement, nothing like that. Well, apparently it had been 70 days since Kate had been last seen in person. And so people were getting worried because they hadn't seen her a little bit before the surgery, obviously after they haven't seen her. But what's strange is that usually they catch these royals coming in or out of the hospital or arriving back at the palace and like paparazzi were waiting around and like no one saw her at all, which is strange because there's only a couple entrances in and out of any building people go in and they were being watched 24 seven and no one saw her. No one got a photo, no one got a video, nothing. So people have just been very worried, making their concerns very vocal on social media. So on March 10th, Kensington Palace released a portrait of Kate and her three children. And this is where things uh, went wrong. We'll show a photo of it on the screen here if you're a visual watcher. In the photo, Kate is smiling and her kids are laughing. And the palace stated that the photo had been taken the week prior by William. So this is like a freshly taken photo, so they say. Well, within hours of the portrait's release, several news agencies around the world, including the Associated Press, pulled the photo from their sites over claims that the image was manipulated. Mm -hmm. And thousands of people on social media were commenting, were analyzing the photo. Photoshop experts were looking at it and talking about it with very obvious signs that the photo had been messed with. Her face itself was like taken from, I mean, 
Allegedly. Allegedly. This is all allegedly. Allegedly taken from, what was it, the Vogue magazine? A magazine cover. But it was like... It was like exact. It was like, like the angle, the the wrinkles on her face, the every... Like everything that was the smile, same. smile, setting, everything. Like you can find it anywhere on TikTok. Right. Where it shows like the actual, like her hands looking weird, mm-hmm. the kids' outfits kind of getting cut off or like sort of like fogged out in a weird way and it's like very even ominous. tree people who are th- what are tree experts called there's a name for it arborists arborists something like that i don't know <laughs> don't ask us but they were even looking at the trees in the background saying that those trees don't even bloom until may <laughs> so the background's not even legit oh my god like everyone's looked at this photo and it's just it's crazy like even the i think the outfits the kids are wearing were apparently the exact outfits down to like the socks the shoes the pants everything that they were wearing back in november at some event they were doing so maybe they were pulled from that day like nothing is real it's Mm -hmm. ai'd out it's all slapped together in photoshop so bizarre especially when you're trying to kind of prove to people that she's okay yeah and like get a better photoshop but it's also like if you don't want to take a picture and you don't want to like be seen because i get it you're like recovering maybe you have a messy bun and you're royal and you don't want to look disheveled and you don't want to clean yourself up i get that I just had a C-section. I get it. <laughs> you don't want to be seen. You don't want to post anything. I get that. But just say that then. Yeah, just why? Just say that then. Be like, I'm okay. Yeah. Everybody, I'm good. It's just that I don't really feel comfortable having my photo taken, whatever. Right Even now. the palace could have come out and said again, like, just to reiterate, we appreciate your concern, but we did say she'll be back after Easter and she will be. She's recovering. Say it again. That is less weird to me. I almost think it's more weird that she posted. Well, I'm oh, I was. Oh, you're gonna going say into it. that okay. next. Okay. Yeah, get into it, girl. So then Kate goes on to her Instagram story. Kate, I'm saying that in quotes because this is definitely not Kate. It's sus. She goes on to her Instagram story and writes. This is the quote. Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I want to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. Girl, you call this amateur? I can't even do this. She pulled a face from a magazine. This is hard to do, even though it's messily done. This is not someone who's a mother just trying to, like, edit a photo and change some, like, little things here and there. This is, like, work. This is all alleged, and it's our opinion. I don't think she wrote that statement, and I don't think she messed with the photo. But also, like, as a royal, I don't even think she would be allowed to do her own Photoshop and then post it. And why would she need to or want to? Here's the thing. If that was actually her and her husband took this cute photo, her kids are smiling, she's in it, why would she feel the need to change it that drastically? Exactly. If that was a real moment. I know. And I think it's even more suspicious that she had posted that. Because then it's like confirming the photo's fake. But then why would she be editing it? Why would she be changing things about it? It's so weird. And the things that are changed about it, besides her face being taken from a magazine or whatever, but the things around her, like kids' clothes and the hands and like, why? And the thing is like, if that was her in the photo, she looks okay, she's dressed well, she looks great. If that was actually her and she's doing okay and she's recovering well, why not then make a statement on video? It could be three seconds. It could be like, I'm still recovering. Just wanted to show my face to show I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Or even like a verbal message, but it's just her voice. I don't know. It's just so weird. The whole thing is bizarre. The next thing that happened after the portrait was pulled, a photo came out of Kate, Kate and William in their car (sighs) on March 11th, on the way to a private appointment. Oh my God. So we'll put the picture up. You can see William's face, but Kate is facing the other way. So creepy, So it's hard to tell if it's actually her. So of course, after the photo made the rounds, online sleuths conjured up another potential controversy when they noted the difference in the color of brick in the wall behind them. Not just the color, the size. Everything behind the car looked photoshopped as well. And so the palace came out again. They were like, hey, the photo's real. We just changed the lighting a little bit. Why do they keep saying they're messing with the photo? I don't understand. The one photo they posted is when she's looking away. And also, did you see, like, somebody found another photo that of her? That looked just like that. It was the same sort Angle. of silhouette. Same hat. Same hairstyle. And hat. Identical. She's not in the car. 
What is going she's, on? That is a fake photo. For but sure. All of this is so pointless to me. Like, yeah. keep up your statement of she's appearing after Easter and leave it there. Yeah. That's all they had to do. That's all they had to do. Because then you could just be like, oh, people are crazy, like, saying where is she? She's missing. Just wait till after Easter. I would be on the palace's side if they just kept their original statement. Yeah, because if something extreme happened... She passed away or something like that. Passed away, something happened during surgery, whatever. They would have let everyone know that. They would have been like, oh my god. Like, it would have been a whole spectacle. Just like every other royal's death. It was a whole spectacle. It would have been that. So I don't know why they would ever try to cover up something like that. It just doesn't make sense to me that that's what's happened. Because why would they hide that or cover that up? What would be the motive there? Like, Well, it just she's about to be messy. queen right she's about to be queen so i think they're worried that that could cause a huge because we just lost a queen she's the next in line correct i don't know everything about royal how it works and stuff yeah she's the next but in if line. there was something that she could be on the verge of death there would be panic and then who's the next queen and how do you go from there and i think they don't want to cause that uproar right now people are, are wondering if she's like Megan's the next queen. Well, Megan's, like, does not want anything to I do know. with it. I know. That was a joke. People are like, is she in a coma? Did something happen during the surgery where she didn't wake up, but she's still alive and they're waiting on it? Like, people are coming Maybe up with all kinds be of it. stuff. Because you don't want to put that out there, right? Oh, she's, she hasn't woken up. Because think about how many, I mean, it's a little cultish, the people who follow these royals. It is. They would be outside the palace banging on the gate. Like, I understand them not wanting to put out a huge statement like that, but then just shut up. Mm-hmm. Like, don't put out weird photos. Don't say anything else. Keep up with what you said till after Easter. Okay, Easter comes around. Then maybe you come out with your second statement and say, like, recovery is not going as well as we thought. And then you have time to prepare. But now you're just causing your own uproar yeah. for different things. Or maybe... Maybe she's fine. Maybe that is what they wanted. Controversy? Could be. No, like, maybe that's what they wanted to, like, get more... Get more what? <laughs> They're the royal views. family. I don't know. They don't need like, more views. I don't know. Like, get them talking about something. They need some scandal to they keep them relevant. They need something. <laughs> they need something exciting going on in their lives. Like, the crown just ended. <laughs> The show's over. Like we need drama. I don't know who's on their marketing PR team or whatever it is, but they should be fired. But I also heard, and this is, like I say, this whole thing's alleged, our opinion. People are making conspiracies up. But I did hear on social media that even her, like, personal lawyers and people who work closely with her have said they haven't gotten a phone call from her, haven't heard from her, nothing since her Why surgery. Why are they saying this? Like, this is so... If I were her right now, I'd be like, oh, my God, guys. Like, I imagine, like, she's in bed trying to recover, like, reading a book, and she's like, these people are nuts. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. She could literally be recovering. And she's getting better and she's going to be okay by Easter. Like, we could all just be, like, looking at this for nothing. But the photos have been messed with. Completely strange and bizarre. They just got to stop. Stop yeah. posting shit. Stop posting photos. Stop editing things. Just say plainly, I'm recovering. I don't want to be seen by anyone. And by the way, like, we're not coming for Kate. I see a lot of, like, influencers and people or news articles and stuff who are talking about her thinking that we're coming for her. I'm actually questioning the palace itself and their... She is not allowed. I'll tell you this right now. Yeah. There's so much control in the royal family. Yeah. Like, every single person has some sort of control over them. She probably doesn't even have access to There's her social no media. There's no way. There's no way that she's allowed to post anything yeah. without going through a bunch of people to okay it. Yeah, imagine them telling her, like, can you edit this photo? <laughs> there's no way they... No, there's no It's not her. Way. Yeah. There's just no way. They don't have that kind of freedom, Jess. No. They don't. They can't just post whatever they want and no. do whatever they want. They can't. They don't have the ability to do that. So yeah. I... It's probably not Kate at all. Whatever the case is, it's weird. I don't know. I did hear that in the next 72 hours, they are making another statement. <laughs> now, we're filming this. What day is it? It's like COVID all over again. I we're know. like waiting for the announcement. <laughs> it is currently March 17th as we're filming this. So by the time this podcast comes out, there could be news. People might know more. So just keep in mind, this is all we know right now as we're filming this. Also, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that today? It's today. Well, technically when you guys see it. But you just said it's March 17th. So I just yeah. want to say happy... 
St. Patty's Day. From the past. In the future. Well, from... We are the past. The past they are the future. You guys are the future. Wow. How does so it feel weird. to be in the future, guys? <laughs> Let's move on. Let us know your thoughts down below, obviously. Do you think she's okay? I hope she is, obviously. Professor Sprout from Harry Potter. <gasps> okay. We gotta talk that about it That reminds me okay. of the scene with the mandrake plants. Yeah. That's my kid when she cries. It's the face she makes. She's like a mandrake? At the vaccination. She was that a mandrake. That is the face she made. <laughs> <laughs> the face of the mandrake screaming. Wow. And that's intense. Yeah. Did everyone cover their ears? <laughs> no. Poor Aww. baby. But yeah, mandrakes. So the actress who plays her is Miriam Margoyles. She was in an interview recently and she insulted Harry Potter fans. I am so insulted. And I'm upset. I'm very upset. Coming from a Hogwarts professor, how dare she? How dare she? I will never look at her in those scenes the same way ever again she essentially told adult fans to grow up and get over it yeah i'm gonna read you a quote from her these are kind of um all mashed together from what she was saying on the interview (laughs) they should be over that by now it was 25 years ago and i think it's for children i do cameos and people say they're doing a harry potter themed wedding and i think oh gosh what is their first night of fun actually gonna be it's time to forget about it and go on to other things it's for children grow up I'm so upset. Literally, there's no <laughs> words. Like, it's literally like you either get it or you don't. It's like getting slapped in the face. She's a part of something huge. She's a part of something huge, and she just, she ruined it for herself. And I'm sorry, like, not to, like, step down to her level, but I only know her from Harry Potter. Come on. <laughs> what else is she in? Like, I'm but, sorry, but. But that's what I mean. Like, she is part of something huge and iconic and legendary and epic and a huge part of so many people like us our lives i can't wait i was literally thinking about it. i'm like i can't wait to show ophelia harry potter i can't wait for the fall so i can watch it annually like i do every year like in the fall again like i'm always thinking about harry potter yeah <laughs> so for her to like go out and say something like that just like Okay, I love everything about Harry Potter, except for you now. I'm going to look at your scenes, and I'll be like, wow, that bitch. But (laughs) why does she think she's booking cameos? It's because people know her as Professor Sprout, and they want a cameo from her. Why else would she be getting cameos? Clearly, she doesn't have love for Harry Potter. Is it because she didn't have a huge role in it? Like, I'm trying to understand, like, why she would have this disdain, and especially for the fans. I mean, does she not know what nostalgia is? It makes people happy. When I watch Harry Potter, it feels like going home. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's comforting. It does feel like going home. That is... That's a perfect way of explaining the feeling. This whole thing about it being for children, does she not realize that the series grew up with us? So, yeah, it started as children because we were children watching it. The cast were children. But has she not seen the last couple movies? But it's, like, so special for our generation for that reason. Because as they were coming out, we were literally growing up with them. Right. The actors. It was, like, a part of our life. (laughs) It was a huge part of our lives. And no one will ever know what that's like. No. Like, we can show these iconic movies to our kids. And it won't be the same. But it still will never be the same as, like, when they were actually coming out. It's a different experience, for sure. And, like, the movement of it. Like, everyone, like, all of our friends, everyone being, like, oh, my God, like, we're going to go see the new Harry Potter movie. Like, the hype around it during that time period. Yeah. It came out, like, every year in the fall. And we would just be so excited. Yeah. I still remember those feelings. Yeah. And, like, when I watch the movies, like, it all comes back. And you kind of, like, forget about your worries. Like, I know it sounds cheesy. It doesn't. But, like, I watch them every year, and we look forward to it, and it's just, it's an experience. It's actually magical, okay? I feel like I'm at Hogwarts. And I tell Luca, because I don't know, we've had this conversation before, but Luca, like, he never grew up watching them. So when I showed it to him when we got together, now, like, he loves them. We watch them every year. He loves them. Because he watched them as an adult, his favorites are the last couple movies, and my favorites are the first couple movies. Me too. You know? Because for him, it's like, okay, it gets more serious. It gets more adult. But, like, for me, the first, like, couple movies, the beginning, when they're kids, like, that's home. That's home. Oh, I know. 
It's such a good feeling. So for her to not want to be a part of that anymore. Fine, I'm pushing her out of the but club. But that's what I mean. It's like how sad for her that she would have come out and said something like this and put herself in a position to be disliked by all of us who hold Harry Potter in such a high pedestal that she was a part of it. Does she not realize how many millions of people like Harry Potter? She has just been pushed out of the club. Yeah. Flick. That sucks for her. Gone. Close I, the door. You know, I'm sad for her. I'm not. You f***ed up. <laughs> you f***ed up. And there's yeah. no coming back from that. Yeah. We don't forget. Sad for you. We don't forget. Never hate on something that brings someone happiness. It doesn't even have to be Harry Potter. Anything that you're doing or watching or anything that brings you comfort. Let people put up their Christmas trees <laughs> in November. <laughs> Let them. Exactly. Why are people so freaking, it's like, so angry? innocent and, like, nothing to do with you if you don't want to do it. Don't do it. Don't hate on everyone else for it. But the fact that she's even calling out people who book a cameo from her <laughs> saying, hey, I'm having a Harry Potter wedding. So excited. And she's bashing them in this interview. I hope they get <laughs> refunded. Refund them for the cameo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god those poor people anyways because if they're having a harry potter wedding they're definitely seeing that interview and they're being like oh shit that was us yeah because <laughs> not everyone has a harry potter wedding she's acting like every single person our age has one it's few and far between okay they do happen so they're definitely gonna see that and be like that was us that's what i mean yeah there's no way the harry <laughs> potter wedding couple is not seeing that interview because everyone's seeing that interview right now if you're watching we support you mm-hmm we support you. You have that Harry Potter wedding. There's only so many professors we have left. So many of them are passing away and have passed away. I know. She's one of the ones that are left. Trust me, you weren't the first cameo pick that they would have wanted. Let me say that. Like, you're just one of the, like, very few we have left. <laughs> McGonagall. McGonagall! I know. Stay. Stay with us. I know. Stay healthy. Eat your greens. Don't send Eat her hate. Greens. Don't send her hate. We're just expressing our opinion. Lupin. Lupin is um, Luca's favorite. I love character. them all, but Snape is my favorite. Oh, Snape's the best. Okay, we're going to talk about Lily Allen. Do you know who she is? She's the one who is in Mamma Mia, the young Donna. Her name's Lily, No, though. no, no. Oh, maybe, but that's not her. So... Lily Allen, she was a popular music artist in the oh, early 2000s. Oh, she sang f*** you. Yeah. F*** you. Yeah, yeah. F*** you very much. Okay, she yeah, sang I know who smile that is. at first when I see you smile. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that, her. So she was very popular when we were young in, like, early elementary school, okay? Recently, she married David Arbor, and she was doing an interview, I think it was, like, last week, and she was talking about the challenges of balancing a career with motherhood, and she said something that puzzled the masses, okay? okay. This is another celebrity talking shit about their kids. Oh, great. These are her words from the interview, okay? I never really have a strategy when it comes to career, but yes, my children ruined my career. I mean, I love them, and they complete me, but in terms of pop stardom, they totally ruined it for me. AKA, she was super popular and doing well until she had kids. Was she saying this in a joking manner? No, she's she's serious because she's talking about like, and in the end, she's saying she's okay with it. Like she's a mom now, but she's saying my kids ruined my career. That's her words. No, you chose you, to have you them. You ruined your own career by having kids. Right. If that's how you view it. Blame yourself. You made the decision. They did not ask to be here. Right. Imagine her kids like watching this interview later in life and being like, what do you mean we did? We didn't choose to be no. here. You chose to have us. Yeah. And that's that's fine if you're deciding. Oh, I hate that shit. She chose motherhood <laughs> over her career. And she I've made stick so with many sacrifices for you. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's like, okay, I didn't ask you to. And that's what it might become. When yeah. they have fights when they're older. I could have been something. Right. I could have been <gasps> something one day, but I had to take care of you. It's like, yeah. bitch, no one asked you to. Like, that's what it sounds like it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know. This is just a very small segment of her interview. I didn't watch it, but I do know this is a real quote. It's on all kinds of news articles. And I really hope that she, I yeah, don't know. Get your ducks in a row, girl. Sort out your priorities. Yeah. But also, like, I did see people saying that, like, she became irrelevant before she even decided to have kids, like, because it was early 2000s. I was about to say, did she have kids, like, a long ass time ago? I almost feel like she might be using this to curb the embarrassment mm. that maybe she was not trending as much mm. anymore. And she could be like, well, I had kids. That's why I just decided to leave. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyways, celebrities love to get mad at their kids for no reason. Kind of sucks. This next thing is a new phenomenon that people are talking about. There is a phenomenon that you need to poop whenever you walk into a bookstore. This actually has a name. It's the Mariko Aoki phenomenon. And it's the sudden urge to defecate when you walk in a room full of books. <laughs> is it because of the smell of them? So there's actually a couple reasons for this. There's an actual quote from a doctor that I have here. The doctor says, it could be related to the person finally slowing down. I was just about to say, is it the quietness, the peacefulness? Yes. And the smell? Yes. I feel that. So for instance, <laughs> sitting to read a book or perhaps the sitting position on the chair makes you think of being on a toilet as well. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> relaxed right this could stimulate someone to feel as if they needed to defecate the calming environment probably is helpful too along with the possibility of having some other triggers like having a cup of tea or coffee before going into the bookstore to visit the bookstore you're feeling at peace your bowels relax like you said you just feel very at home in a bookstore i feel that i'm trying to think because i go to bookstores all the time have i had the need to poop i'm sure a few times i have maybe not every time and it's not like an immediate, like, I need to go now. No, because that's like panicky. No, I don't feel panicked. It's just like, uh... It's like, I could go home and poop. Yeah. Like, I could or last. Like I could poop here. Or, yeah, or <laughs> I could poop here. Yeah. In a gentle way, not in a, oh my gosh. Frantic, I'm gonna shit my pants. No, not like an IBS flare-up. It's more of that feeling where you're like, this is gonna be a good poop and I have time. Like, I could go home, I could go here, I could grab a coffee and then go. That's... <laughs> that sounds more likely. I'll have a coffee and then go. Yeah. I love I bookstores. Like a bookstore. The smell is amazing. Ty and I are actually going to the library here in Orangeville after this. Why? Because we have like a video topic that I did on my main channel about like haunted Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> haunted? Yeah. So we're going to go and see if we can find them at the bookstore. And you're going to buy them? No. We're just going to go look for them. Oh. Maybe I'll have to poop. I was going to say if you buy them. I have a kid. I'll text you and let you know how my bowels are. Oh. As I'm there. That's not the test of this video. I'm just going to a bookstore, so we'll okay. see. Okay. All right. Speaking of going to the bathroom, Jason Derulo. Have you heard about this? Jason Derulo. <laughs> Tell me. He was booed by fans as he was singing on stage. He decided to go for a bathroom break. <laughs> so he actually said, guys, I'm so sorry, but do you mind if I just go use the bathroom real quick? And the crowd started to boo as he ran off stage to go use the bathroom. Like, people were, like, angry, throwing stuff on stage, mad that he was going to pee. And I feel bad because, like, we're all humans. Okay, but do we believe that that's what he was doing? What do you think he was doing? It could have been anything. A little line? Could have been. A little shot? Yay! -o. What's that? Cocaine, I think. Yayo? Yeah. Don't you know the... You got the yayo. That's what it is? Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. It's cocaine. What? Don't you know Lana Del Rey's song? Yay yo, yay you, yay yo. I didn't know that's what it was, that it was just sound she was making. Yeah. He's going to get that yay yo. Okay, but what if he was just peeing? Well, then if that's the case, then that sucks. And he should be allowed to do that. Any human should be allowed to. I hate having to ask to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> why is that? Why do I need to ask? Like, I just, in school, everything. Like, why do you need a bathroom pass? Why do you yeah. need a time limit? Like, I just... This should be the most understanding. I need to go, I need to go. People, yeah, people should universally understand that this is a need that we have. I found out today via a podcast, like a health podcast, mm -hmm. that IBS is considered an autoimmune disease? Disorder? Yeah, I've disorder? heard that too. It's like a disorder, yeah. Autoimmune disorder. Disease. Or it disorder. It could be either. Well, I didn't know that. And so it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because like your bowels are like inflamed and they're not functioning properly, usually because there's other things going on mm -hmm. with your health and stuff. Yeah, totally. So I feel like it deserves more attention. You think he has IBS? <laughs> no, but I, all I'm saying is that if you feel like you need to leave your show mid-show, I'm not saying oh. he doesn't not have IBS. You think he had to do a poopy. Or maybe he was drinking, he was drunk, and he needed to pee. I don't know. Who cares? Let the man do what he needs to do. Yeah, like, if he's gone for more than five minutes, sure, you could start getting angry because you paid for a show. But, like, let him go quickly. And from what I know, it was quick. So relax. Okay. Okay, speaking of concerts, Olivia Rodrigo. So 
abortion is illegal in Missouri and Olivia Rodrigo played a show there the other day and so to show how much she was against this law she handed out bags of plan B and condoms to Whoa. all the people and kids that attended her show last month in conjunction with her world tour Rodrigo launched the fund for good campaign which aims to protect women and girls reproductive rights and Plan B retails for $50 and she put two packs in each like giveaway bag. And um, she allowed to do that. I assume so. I'm sure her team looked into it and you can, Mm. but parents were obviously not very pleased at their kids getting plan B pills. But at the same time, and like, we don't want to get too political on here. I believe in women's rights and that you should be able to decide if you want to have an abortion or not. That's just me personally, obviously. It depends on how far along you are. I don't love the late ones because I feel like at that point you've got the heart and the lungs and everything growing and everything. But I feel like, I mean, plan B's are literally back up when you've had a night where you weren't careful. I've used plan B. I haven't because I heard that it really messes with your hormones. It makes you feel so sick. Yeah, I've heard that. I only took it once. (laughs) I only did it once. And I was with Luca. So I just feel like that's important to say. I don't know why. And we were young. We didn't have our careers together. We didn't have our own house. We weren't married. None of the things that I would have wanted to have a kid. And the thing about plan B, you take it within the 24 hours. Right. So it's not like an abortion. No, it's like, it stops the egg from it's, being fertilized. It's just like ha- birth control. Right. It's just like what birth control is. So you can't be pro birth control And then against plan B. Plan B. That doesn't make sense at all. Right. So Um, this these yeah, plan B is not an abortion pill, but I think it's like the next thing. No, but I I feel like some people categorize it as like they view it in that way. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yes, they view it in that way. But the thing is, like I mean, like you said, I don't want to get political about it either. Like I feel with the abortion that there should be a place where women can go to to seek help for like you never know there's like that like five percent of women that get sexually assaulted abused by family members not even just family members just strangers whatever and unfortunately become pregnant and like what are you gonna do and then also i'm so i feel very strongly about not having kids when you're not ready for them or you don't have the funds or whatever anything you know what i mean and like kudos to the people that will go through a pregnancy and give their kids away up for adoption whatever the case may be i mean i can't even imagine doing that because pregnancy is hell and then giving your child up to somebody else must be the hardest thing in the world to do and i can't even imagine doing that but yeah i think for situations like that abortion should definitely be available to all women any women and i hate that there are men in place that are making these decisions and approving of these bills and and laws and i think that that's the most messed up part about it all is that it's men who are making these decisions for women and what they can do with their own bodies but i do also think that you should make the decision early under 12 weeks now that i've had my own pregnancy i realize that once there is a heartbeat and once there is like an actual body forming brain forming they feel pain that's just a fact sorry i don't want to upset anybody but that's just a fact yeah and so if you could make the decision before 12 weeks that's kind of where i'm at yeah that's ideal yeah i don't think that it's a fetus up until the end like 40 weeks i that's a baby that's a full baby people people have babies i know somebody that had a baby at 23 weeks wow and it survived yeah and it's a whole lot it's a whole ass baby yeah make the decision before 12 weeks is how i feel about it but it should be available and it shouldn't be something that's taken away yeah and once again everyone has the right to their own opinion if you want to comment respectfully we appreciate that Mm -hmm. and back to olivia I think it's fine for her to hand out the plan B's as a sort of rebellious statement. I don't mind. I mean, if you don't want to use it, don't use it. If you want to give them to someone else, give them to someone else. If your parents don't agree and want to take them from you, if you're underage, whatever. But it's literally just her being like a girl's girl. Right, and right. like for the girls. Right, exactly. And that's it. And I and I love that because yeah. I, think, I think women need to stand up together and stand up for each other and like yeah i think that that's great yeah me too 
We're going to be moving on to Haley Bieber's sister, whose name is Alea Baldwin. Have you heard about what she did? No. Haley Bieber's sister threw a used tampon at a bartender. Why? Okay, let's get into it. So she was charged with assault for getting into a fight at a bar in Savannah, Georgia. So security footage shows her forcing herself into an employee bathroom at this bar, okay? Two of the bouncers came over. They were like, hey... You can't force yourself into the employee bathroom. You have to use the public ones. Like, these ones aren't for you. I don't know if she thought it was okay because she was, like, a celebrity. celebrity. So she was like, oh, let me use these exclusive ones. And they were like, no, you can't. Like, go to the public bathrooms. She got upset and she pulled one of their hair and kicked the other (gasps) one in the groin. And then she was like, I just have to change my tampon. Like, I'm on my period. Let me change my tampon. And they were like, okay, be quick about it then. So she goes in there, does her thing. She walks out with the bloody tampon and throws it at the bartender. So, of course, they call the police. She's charged with assault. What was she thinking? I don't care how drunk you are. I don't even know if she was that drunk. I have no idea. I have never been so intoxicated that I'm like, throwing a tampon's a good idea. That's disgusting. That's like the biggest f*** you ever. <laughs> That's, like, on par with spitting at somebody, like, spitting in someone's face. On par. I think that's worse. I think it's on par. Oh, yeah. I think totally the same as blood. Well, spitting on somebody is literally, like, I think that that's the lowest form that you could go. I think the tampon's lower. (laughs) I think it's just a little lower. (laughs) They're both disgusting. Yeah. I think they're just both disgusting. Blood's worse, though. Okay, blood's worse. Right. I guess I'm thinking because I know I'm clean, so, like, my blood is fine. But I guess some stranger's blood, I would not want it thrown at me. Yeah, girl, that's a biohazard. Yeah, that's a problem. That's scary. I think it's just surprising that it's Haley Bieber's sister that did this. Why am I not surprised, though? Yeah, why is there always issues? I mean, even, have you heard, like, what's going on with Haley's dad? Like, if you go on to his Instagram, like, I'll show you after he's like posting videos of him just like spouting nonsense and people are worried that he's either lost his mind or he's on drugs okay but even the way in which Haley got with bieber is crazy she was a fan oh yeah she was a fan of selena and justin so that whole family is whack (laughs) sorry (laughs) Haley, you're gorgeous but crazy yeah she's stunning but crazy she has a history i've seen the screenshots of her like weird twitter like groups yep, that she was in her twitter obsession and she used to comment on selena and justin's photos and be like oh my gosh i love that there's them. videos of her like chasing after him like when they're kids like at like award shows or like red carpets and yeah. stuff and like justin is justin and she's like a nobody yet you yeah. know like she no one knows who she is but she's there because of her her dad is an actor or whatever he is. Yeah. <laughs> whatever he is. I don't know. <laughs> whatever. And her, like, kind of, like, running around and chasing around Justin and, like, trying to, like, you know, it's really... Oh, my gosh. Those videos after they were married and she, like, runs after him, like, when the press is there. <laughs> Dude, he skateboards away. And he, like, shoves the door in her face. I feel so bad for her in those moments because he does not care. And I don't think he does it on purpose. I think he just doesn't think about her, which is worse. Because at least if you're doing it on purpose, you, like, acknowledge her. But I think he just, like, does things and doesn't even think about it. I don't know, because she seems annoying. I don't know. Like, that doesn't... (laughs) I mean, whatever. Like, she just seems annoying. Like, Selena... I got a lot of hate, apparently, on TikTok for what I said about you Selena. Did. But the thing is, I wasn't saying anything bad about her, though. Well, you anyway, said it was... You said I'm, it was not gonna m- just, I'm not going to go back and okay. reiterate or explain. All right. Because I, I said what I said, and I don't care. Well, even your Adam Sandler thing got a lot of hate. Oh, speaking of that, I watched Space Man, and it was incredible. And the thing I enjoyed about it was that, first of all, the spider was incredible, and... The movie was incredible for the spider. But the thing about Adam Sandler's character was we weren't supposed to like him. He wasn't like a likable character at all. We weren't supposed to like him. Therefore, I could actually watch the movie enjoying it, knowing he was actually playing a character that you're not supposed to like. Okay. The thing is, it's annoying when he's a character that everyone likes and I can't stand. Does the spider change him? Yes, the spider changes him. And the spider is the reason why everyone should watch the movie. Is it a spider crab? No. 
just a spider. It's a spider, but sometimes the spider has moments where it has these like flowy tentacly things. Because it's an alien spider. It's an alien spider. That's, it floats. Seems like a ripoff of my book, but I'll check it out. No spoilers, but what you said happened. Not to a T, but like. Yeah. It's definitely inspired by for the sure. Book. It's gotta be. Well, it's gotta be. I know mom and dad watched it and they loved it too, so it must be good. You must have be good. to watch it, Jess. It's okay. so good. I'll watch it. Hanush is, is the, the spider. spider's name. Hanush. Hanush. He named it that. He has no name because where he comes from, his planet and all of that. That's my book. No <laughs> way! Yeah. Whoa. See, like, because he's like, oh, like humans, like find comfort in naming each other does the spider speak english he learns he studies of earth. course right he studies my earth he watches the yep. humans and he's he drawn to the humans loneliness yeah i'll watch it adam sandler like his character is actually a piece of shit and the spider like makes him see that he's a piece of shit and so then he changes. Yeah. I'll watch it and tell you what I think. I apparently I got hate. I don't know why, but well, I do know why. <laughs> it's because you're very opinionated and people aren't going to like that all but the time. Like, do you want to watch a boring podcast where everything's agreeable? Well, that's the thing. Like people are here because like the reason why you're commenting is because you're mad and I made you mad and that means that this podcast makes you feel something. Yeah, it's evoking so, emotion. Listen, if I read a book and it makes me mad and I want to throw it across the room. It's a good book. Right. If I'm DNFing a book, that's a bad book. Right. I'm bored. I'm closing it up and I'm never looking at it again. Yeah. But they watched the whole clip and then commented. It's good for um, traffic. So keep doing that. <laughs> People are very afraid of the solar eclipse that's going to happen on April 8th. <laughs> what? How did I not know about this? Okay. Continue. Schools are literally closing. <sighs> What? Like, they're telling kids not to go to school, to stay home, stay put, don't go anywhere. Okay, well, I'm confused. Why? Don't go Even anywhere. news stations that I've seen have been like, stock up on two weeks of water, make sure your house is full of food. And I'm like, we've had solar eclipses before. Like, what is it about this one that suddenly, like, the world is shutting down for a day? Are they trying to insinuate there's going to be a blackout? I guess. Should we all get together as a family? Maybe we should hunker down at your house <laughs> there are safety concerns that can arise when the moon blocks the sun from earth in the afternoon causing a temporary moment of darkness in the middle of the day you also aren't supposed to look at the sky when it's happening so sometimes you can buy like special glasses mm -hmm. if you're going to be outside during the day or you just don't look outside close your curtains don't stare at the sky because apparently you can get full or partial blindness if you look outside yeah, can't you get that anyway if you look at the sun no, this is, like, a way more extreme version. Because, like, you can look at the sun for a couple seconds and, like, it'll hurt and, like, whatever. But if you even look at the eclipse, it's so bright. Yes. Now I want to look. You can get glasses. You telling me not to do something, I want to do it. Buy the glasses. <laughs> but I wouldn't trust those. <laughs> I don't know if I trust those. Like, you're telling me you're going to make glasses for, like, one of the biggest events that Earth does. And we're going to trust that a human's like, I know how to be okay. We're talking about the sun and a little human. This is making me want to watch Twilight. <laughs> oh, Eclipse. I think genius names for books, by the way. So cool. I was just about to say the fact that all of like the Twilight series has something to do with the moon phases. But do you know that wasn't her idea? I was watching this video. She had the stupidest name for the book. I don't remember what it was. What was it? But her publisher was like, listen... These would be really cool if you name the series this. And she was like, that's awful. No one will buy those. And the publishers Stephanie. were like, no, trust us. So it wasn't her idea. The name was something so silly. It was so bad. I don't remember. I'll have I to look I it up knew. after. Yeah. But it has I'll nothing look it up. to do I'll with look it up. It's nothing to do with the moon. Did you ever read the new Edward point of view book? Midnight Sun, no. Why? Um You read I don't so many like things. when series do a different point of view and release it as a whole new book because I already know the story. Like, I don't really care about seeing a different point of view. I'm bored because I already know the story. But you haven't tried like, it. Like, I'm not interested. No, but, like, I've had other series that I love come out with stuff like that. Like, for example, if Akatar released Rysan's point of view, I wouldn't read it, I don't think. Uh, no, you know what? I would. Yes. But I, don't, I wouldn't be excited because you know what's going to happen. I wouldn't be excited because you already know. Every time she writes in Rysan's point of view, it's very rare that she does. And it's very raunchy. I... 
Yeah, but do you Love find that it. he's like, I'm looking over at Feyre and I just want to bend her over the table and like no, literally that's no. all he does. That's all he okay. does. Okay, his reaction to her death under the mountain before she was, she became like Fey. She was a human. That whole sequence of events of what he was feeling during those moments, we kind of got to see it through his eyes at one point. A little bit, yeah. Because didn't she like go into his soul or something? She, yes. She like, went into his body or something. Yeah. Or she was overseeing his from his point of view i don't know no she actually saw through his eyes that whole thing i think i've read that <laughs> too many times i'm sorry i just i would love to read raisan's point of view but in then, any like, situation do a novella and then title each chapter a really significant event that happened in the series and that would be interesting i would not want to read the entire series over again in raisan's point of view because he's just thinking dirty thoughts about Feyre. And like we already knew that. Anyway, the original yes. the original name for Twilight okay. was Forks. She wanted to name the book after the town yeah. that they were in. How boring is that? What about the other books? I, I don't know. She would have named them. But the first book she wanted to name Forks. Maybe the second one was Spoons, I don't know. But like <laughs> knives. How boring. And it ends with cutlery. Spatula. Part one and part two. Butcher knife. Yeah, so her publishers were like, listen, that's not a good name. <laughs> they were like totally up front. They were like, you got to do Twilight. Well, thank God for them. New Moon, Eclipse, whatever. Breaking Dawn. All about like the sky and space and Earth. And she was like, those won't sell. And her agents were like, trust us. They'll sell. And they did. So it's kind of a lesson. Even though you're passionate about your work, maybe you're not good at titling things. And like even me writing my book, I don't love my title and I feel like people aren't going to like it. So I'm going to just trust my publisher. Yeah. I'll be like, what do you think will sell? Because they know they're in the industry. They know what sells. Right. Anyway. But also, if you feel passionately enough about something, you have to go with your gut, too. Sure. Like advocate for yourself. And if you watch Little Women, you'll see what I mean. Why did she have a book that she wanted? Little to Women. She wanted to title it Little Women? She wrote Little Women. Like, one of the characters in the movie. Oh, it's like Inception. So it the movie's ends, called Little Women. Yeah. But and she, she writes a book. So you, you watch the whole, like, their life experience. Yeah. And then at the end, she's written a book. Because she's like, wants to be an author. Yeah. And she's written the book Little Women about them and their lives. Oh, okay. But it's interesting because it's, like, coming from a time period where, like, women didn't work. And right. it wasn't really looked like that wasn't really... A, something that people were fond of right so she was really advocating for herself to like the person that was going to publish it and he wanted to own it and she was like no i want to own my own book and like all this stuff and he was okay. like telling her how to finish it and she was like very strict on how she wanted things to be it literally ends with like them making copies of the book but it's like you gotta watch it. I'm gonna watch it. You've gotta watch but it. But if Stephanie Meyer went with that whole thing, I know it's no, empowering, but, but then she would have no, no, no. Forks but as a book. if she wasn't passionate, like if she was like, oh, that's a good idea, and she did it, then that's fine. But all I'm saying is, like, you're creative. If you feel passionately about something, like eat away at your soul. If you couldn't have the title that you wanted. Oh, and then she wanted like a cover that was bad. And the publisher was like, no, like, there should be an apple in someone's hand. And she was like, that's so stupid. Like, she didn't agree with anything they wanted to do. And the apple thing is still kind of weird to me. Because mm -hmm. why? It's called Twilight, but there's an apple. Was there a meaning behind that? I don't remember. Why an apple? See, even I don't even know why oh, they did Oh, it's all kind of weird. Because then isn't there, like, chess? Yeah, the flowers. Book? Bleeding flowers. I mean, listen, it was, like, it's the best like selling. Trying, it's, like, trying too hard. In my opinion. And maybe that's why we bought it, because we're like, what does this mean? Well, because teenagers, right? Right, right. Yeah. Angsty little bitches. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to do psychopath tests. Well, Mandy's going to do it. I'm going to read it. These are kind of like... I'm so excited. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Am I a psychopath? We'll see. <laughs> Ty is, apparently. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's go. If you answer this riddle correctly... You think like a psychopath. Okay. A man is found murdered on a Sunday morning. His wife calls the police who question the wife and the staff. And they're given the following alibis, okay? The wife says, I was sleeping. The, butler, the wife did it. The butler says, I was cleaning the closet. The gardener says, I was picking vegetables. The maid says, I was getting the mail. The cook says, I was preparing breakfast. Who was the killer? 
And how did the police know who it was? Say the first part again. How did he die? A man is found murdered on a Sunday morning. His wife calls the police, who question the wife and all of her staff. So all the alibis are the wife was sleeping, the butler was cleaning the closet, the gardener was picking vegetables, the maid was getting the mail, and the cook was preparing breakfast. Who was the killer? Like, did they all? No. <laughs> there is just one. Maybe just just guess. The wife? No. <laughs> Was it the cook? So the police took the maid into custody because you don't get mail on Sundays. She said she was getting the mail. No post on Sundays. (laughs) Yeah. What's that from? Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. No post on Sundays. I actually didn't read Tithes I think it was too much to memorize what each person was doing. Yeah, it's a lot. I think you have to visualize it. Like, you have to see it. Like, exactly. Like, it's hard. Like, I couldn't remember what person was doing what. So ask me another one. Okay. I want to be a psychopath. All right. If you get this right, you're a psychopath. Okay. A woman was in court for killing her husband. She said she wasn't guilty and that she dearly missed him. In the closing statement, the woman's lawyer stands up and says, Her husband was just missing. Everyone, look at the doors. He's going to walk through them in about 30 seconds. So the entire jury stares at the doors, waiting for this woman's husband to walk through. The lawyer and the woman stare at the jury. The lawyer concludes by saying, See? If you were so sure she killed her husband, you wouldn't be watching that door. The jury immediately gave a guilty verdict to the woman. Why? Ty got this like this. Like, right away. I was like, what? She was in court for killing her husband. Right. The lawyer said, he was just missing. He's alive. He's about to walk through these doors in 30 seconds. Everybody look. And so the jury was like looking at the doors like, oh my gosh. But the woman and the lawyer were looking at the jury. So how did the jury know immediately then that she was guilty? Because they weren't looking at the doors? Yes. Because if she really believed she didn't kill her husband and that he was alive and was going to walk through, wouldn't she look at the doors like, oh my gosh, I'm going to see him again. He was missing. One. Yeah, but you didn't get it till I had to say it slowly. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like... These stories are too long for me to process. Like, I feel like I need, like, a one-sentence riddle. The next two are shorter. Okay. (laughs) I feel so stupid. If you get this riddle right, you have the mind of a criminal. Okay, let's go. Andy is put in a cell with a dirt floor and only one window. The window is too high for him to reach. The only thing in the cell with him is a shovel. He won't be able to get any food or water and only has two days to escape or he will expire. Andy can't dig a tunnel. <laughs> dig a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Andy can't dig a tunnel because it will take him much longer than two days to do it. How did he escape? Ty also got this right away. Stop putting pressure on me. I just I can't believe that because I would be okay, in your position. Hold on, hold on. Now I have to think about how it started. So he has a shovel. He has a dirt ground and a window. And a window. How did he escape? He shoveled the dirt into a pile and got out the window? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's easy. You're actually doing pretty good. It takes you a second, but I think that's fine. People process. Yeah, I need to process the whole thing. Sometimes I have to say it out loud. Oh, damn. Okay. A woman came back from her honeymoon and told everyone her husband perished by accidentally falling off a cliff. The detective figured out she was lying when he spoke to the travel agent who booked the tickets. How did she know that she lied to him? How did he know that she lied to him? Because he spoke to the travel agent who booked yeah. the tickets? Yeah. Do you have The an travel agent didn't send them to a place with a cliff? <laughs> <laughs> like, because he fell off a cliff, right? She is saying that her husband accidentally fell off a cliff. And the police didn't believe her. They were like, she definitely killed this guy. Yeah. And they found out. It was confirmed, their suspicion, when they spoke to her travel agent. They didn't go on a trip. <laughs> It's a, it can't be something stupid where it's like the travel agent's like, oh, she was a bitch to the husband. No. Okay. So here's the answer. The woman bought only a one-way ticket for her <gasps> husband, whereas she bought a round-trip uh, trip ticket for herself, which means she was sure she w- would return alone. Ty got that one too. Why would she be so stupid? I know, right? That's not thinking like a criminal. That's messy. You're not a good criminal. Yeah. If you're doing that. So then maybe I do have the mind of a criminal because... <laughs> You'd do it better. Because I wouldn't book one ticket back <laughs> for just me. And also the husband, did he not realize, like, oh, honey, like, you forgot to book me a round ticket. Why do I only have one ticket there? I don't know. That isn't a good one. Although, like, 
when Ty and I go on trips, like, I do all the booking, and he never checks, like, did you make sure that you got me there and back? <laughs> Are you going to murder me? <laughs> <laughs> did you make sure you got me there and back? <laughs> if you're a husband watching, always check. <laughs> I'm, just I'm sure he checks, and you just don't know. Maybe. If you get this riddle right, you have the mind of a serial killer. Ooh, that's pressure okay let's go a serial killer abducted five different people and sat them down each with two pills in their hand and a glass of water he told them each to take one pill but warned them that one was poisonous and the other was harmless whichever pill the victim didn't take the serial killer would take each and every victim perished while the slayer survived how did he do it so there was two pills in each person's hand one of them was poison and one of them was not yes was the water poison? Yes! No, I just got like a feeling in my body where I was like, oh, so you're a serial killer then. <laughs> you're a serial killer! Ew. So I got all of them wrong. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a psychopath. I'm a serial killer. But you know what? That makes sense because I watch a lot of serial killer documentaries. A lot of true crime. Is that your excuse? Yeah. <laughs> the gulp before. <laughs> yeah, the gulp before. That didn't sound so sure. Did Ty get that? No, that's the only one he didn't get. The <laughs> only one. Yeah. So it's interesting that you brought all of those that were like criminal mind, psychopath yeah. mind, serial killer mind. You're just a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Would you have gotten any of those? I think one or two, but I do think they were. Maybe next time I should find <gasps> and then yeah. ask you. Okay. I'll do that next week. All right. That's gonna be Test fun. Me. I'm gonna do criminals, serial killer, <laughs> and psychopath. Oh my all god, right. the water was poison. <gasps> That was good. Mm. That was really good. Those poor victims. They were I like, know. oh, I have a chance. That is the end of our podcast today. Don't forget, if you would like to see our crazy concert experience or Mandy's exorcism, <laughs> it's on Patreon. Go check it out. And yeah, we'll see you guys next week. We have a, a spooky topic next week about the Appalachian Mountains. Or is it Appalachian? Okay, so I always say Appalachian, but then whenever I see other people, people talking say about Appalachian. Appalachian. <laughs> Anyways. Appalachian sounds smoother, but... Maybe both are okay. I don't know. I don't know either. Anyways, so we'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your day. And yeah, see you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.